Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Glad to have you here. Today we have a Wood Elf versus Empire matchup. Um, and I will be bringing the Empire um, to bear. And uh, I think the Wood Elves do generally have the advantage in this um, matchup, especially with the powerful um, Deepwood Scouts being kind of the primary um, unit, I think, that is um, fantastic against the Empire. Um, but in my attempts to neutralize this, um, you can see I do have three units of Reichsguard. I have two regular Reichsguard and one Zentler's Reichsguard, um, just because I had an extra couple hundred gold. And so I figured, why not make, you know, why not bring these super cool, super really powerful um, units? One of these units here. Um, and having that immunity uh, to psychology is always helpful in regiments of renown. Um, you can see I have my traditional four spearmen in the back. I do have um, two stocked units, Sterling's Revenge and the Silver Bullets, here to kind of um, deal with uh, trees. This is kind of my anti-tree answer. Um, you can see I have a main line here of five swordsmen. I've got Boris Toddbringer on the horse. Um, and you can see the Sunmaker is firing off its missiles. So I thought I'd have some fun and bring this guy. And oh man, it's coming for the Wood Elves. Um, and they have a nice big blob here <laughs> that these rockets are going to hit. Um, you can see there is a main line of tree men here, three tree men. That's why you do need to bring those kind of answers to um, those answers to them, because they'll just tear through swordsmen for days unless there's something to kind of handle them. Um, you can see Eternal Guard on the flanks, um, Deepwood Scouts up front, and here come the rockets, the initial barrage into the... Oh, man. So good. And Darth was just sitting there, like, not caring at all. Oh, here comes some more. Just blowing these guys to bits. And so this is exactly what I wanted. You see how he has two units stacked up here? I'm getting a ton of value. Um, and that can be the danger of leaving your units kind of clumped up like this. And man, the Sunmaker is just so cool. You don't get to see them enough. See, actually, a lot of them are missing. Uh, but putting in a lot of good damage down as well. You do have to kill a lot of units with it to make it pay for itself though, because it is so expensive with the almost 2,000 resources. Um, but here you can see it's almost taken out that already, um, just by dealing with these two units. Um, what else does he have here? He's got three, Glade Guard with Starfire Shaft, um, Durthu, and I think he has one unit of Wild Riders out on this flank trying to find a home. Um, so they're going to be advancing on me. You can see uh, Durthu is winding up an attack. Oh, he's summoning a feral manticore there. That's super cool. Um, would have liked to see this guy summoned a bit closer. Oh man, just devastating volleys. Um, you can see here I was hoping to catch his Deepwood Scouts, but he was paying attention, so he pulled back. Um, and you can see I did switch targets now from that one because I had done a ton of damage, and now I was targeting this one. And the Sunmaker is just so accurate um, for a... Uh, for a rocket unit. Wow, just I think that unit got completely decimated. Oh man, you can see they're already broken, routing off the field. Um, you can see that Manticore taking a ton of damage on the way in. Um, and the Manticore is kind of coming up by itself. It's going to spring my unit, my uh, my stocked unit's trap. And you're going to see they're going to do a ton of damage in just a couple volleys here. And um, I, that's why I do also have the Spearmen in reserve to come in here. You can see my Reichsguard are pushing around the flanks, getting ready to go in here. Um, and I, that's why I do kind of like the um, Swordsman as a pick rather than Flagellants. A lot of people bring Flagellants against um, the Wood Elves. Um, but I think those uh, that extra bit of shields, just, the, just having the shields being a little bit cheaper, um, can really nullify um, the advantage here because um, this guy's gotten a couple volleys into my Swordsman. Um, I've lost like nine models, um, but a flagellin unit would be almost entirely dead um, because they don't have that shield and they don't have any armor. And so you can see the Deepwood Scouts um, primarily non-armor piercing damage. Um, but Treekin are going to be coming up here, these guys as well. And you can see my Hellstorm rocket battery still, or my Sunmaker, sorry, still firing off, hitting these guys on the flank. You can see barely skirting around that guy. I'm going to get in here. You can see those poor Treekin in the front line. Just getting gunned down. Um, my silver bullets are targeting Durthu here. 
So he's having trouble getting to the front line. Um, you can see some of my uh, my unit, regular unit of Rex Guard, got in here, and I'm gonna wait till he kind of counter charges with these guys, and I'm gonna bring them in the back, um, just to try and squash these wild riders here. So you can see they're gonna get a decent charge, um, but they're just so lightly armored, they are not gonna have a good time um, against these guys. So you're gonna see here. Nice charge of the Reichsguard. Gonna punish these guys for getting a little too overzealous. Oh man. And you get the Zentler's Reichsguard with the, the gold, it's just so cool. Spearing some reindeer for um, for dinner. <laughs> and you're gonna see they're gonna start taking some massive casualties. Um, over here you can see um, I am kind of shooting my own guys. <laughs> <laughs> with the, the rocket, which is not the best, and the, the spears did catch up, um, but at this point it doesn't really matter. I've neutralized so much of his ranged firepower here. You can see this amazing charge from the Reichsguard coming in here. Um, and that's why uh, Durthu really isn't in the meta anymore, is because you really need that Prey of Anathrama here um, to protect your ranged units from cavalry. Um, you can see over there the Wild Raiders are dead through taking a ton of magic damage here um, and he does have I think physical resistance here you can see that 20% but the silver bullets don't care um, and they're gonna be doing a great job that's why they're great to bring in this matchup they're gonna punish large tree units kind of tree kin um, and other such things you can see these guys are already routing I'm gonna be switching targets here with my Sterling's Revenge keep my silver bullets focused on this guy um, and this battle is going to get cleaned up. Um, one of the reasons I do kind of like the uh, Hellstorm rocket battery, the Sunmaker, is you can see how long this battle has been going on, like just a couple of minutes, and it's already almost out of ammo. So it's already almost um, paid for itself or expended all of its ammo. Um, so you don't have to worry about it for as long as you do um, other things like cannons and mortars and such. Um, you can see Treekin running right away. Glade Guard. Our these spearmen just trying to catch up um, and I think the elf units are faster 35, 31, yeah so they're not going to catch them but they're being brave and trying um, you can see my swordsman here I didn't give you any dirt through action so hopefully I'll get a swipe in but no he's actually shattered and he's going to route off the field I wonder if he's going to, oh nope so their chain route um, yeah, anyways, I've not had much luck against the Wood Elves as the Empire. Um, and I don't think this is quite a meta build against the Empire. Um, generally, it's a lot more deep with scouts, less tree kin, um, a couple wild riders, um, more eternal guard, and then, of course, um, an elf lady. Um, generally on a horse or an eagle or something um, to help it avoid combat. Uh, just because then you can really tr protect your stuff with your spears um, and even three Reich's Guard have trouble like kind of angling themselves to get through. Um, you can see my main line here <laughs> did nothing really. Um, really the main killers were Sterling's Revenge, Silver Bullets, Sunmaker, and the Reich's Guard. You can see poor Boris only got one kill so we really sent these guys pack in here. Um, you can see the Treekin just getting isolated and shut down in the front and these poor Glade Guard just getting burned to death by the Sunmaker. Um, so yeah. And since that was a pretty short one, I figured I would show you the other one I played. Uh, just because we have time. Uh, just talking about some basic things you can do to kind of improve your odds. Um, I haven't been getting the closest of games lately um, for some reason. But still things to show, still things to talk about. Um, here you can see it is the Beastmen versus the Dwarves. I'm going to pause it here um, just so I can talk before everything happens. Um, you can see I have a main line of three best gore herd, um, one gore herd on each side. Out on the flanks I have some spearmen just for mass um, to go clog things up. Um, I have one centigore with great weapon. I have one centigore with throwing axes to deal with gyrocopters. I have, um, there's my other spearman, and then of course I have a chariot, which is a great bring against the dwarves. They just have such a hard time dealing with this. Um, you can see I do have a Ungor Raider. I of course have 
uh, Malagor and a Gorbel, just put down as cheap as possible, um, but still get the Slaughter's Call to boost the effectiveness of kind of these two Gore, or these two best Gore herd. It does have a very short radius, so that it is something to be aware of. Um, yeah, so there you can see it, ha it kind of has to be between the two units if you want two units to get it. Um, so definitely something to be aware of. And he was Clan Angrind a second ago, um, and I didn't notice that he switched, so I brought the Brace Shaman of Death. Um, I brought Spirit Leech to deal with Ethereal Thanes, and then I, have, I also brought the Purple Sun of Xerius, which is actually one of the few... Um, one of the few Vortex spells that is actually somewhat useful. Um, so we're going to go over his build. This is a build you don't really see very often anymore. Um, you can main line here of Longbeards. Um, Generally, it's been determined that just having Dwarf Warriors with um, the Grumbling Guard or something like that is generally a more effective tactic, cheaper tactic. Um, he does have the gar Grudge Thrower, so he's going to be chucking some rocks at me. And this makes it seem like he doesn't have the Regiments of Renown pack, um, just because the, the Regiments of Renown are so vastly superior um, to their cousins here, just the regular Grudge Thrower. Um, strangely enough, he does have some Iron Breakers on the flank, going to be holding down the flanks here. Hopefully I'm going to try and get my Centaurs with Great Weapons in and my Chariots in against these guys to really generate some value. Um, and then Grom Brindle and a Runesmith. Um, uh, and then he does have three units of Thunders here in the front, which is terrifying. Um, really one of the only bits of killing power I have are these Bestigor Herd. And if, and if I just charge straight up here with no, just let him get all his volleys in, these Bestigore are going to be melted to pieces. So that's a great way to kind of get my Bestigore killed. So um, I'm going to be running up here, stopping my Gorbel just out of range of the Thunderers here. I'm going to be moving up these guys up and around. You can see my Chariot is coming up and around as well, trying to um, get in there. And you can see I do switch my Bestigore herd to walking. Um, because I can't allow them to just take that fire. Um, I'm going to be rushing in here, hopefully drawing fire with these gore herd, and then also I'm going to be disrupting their lines with the purple sun of Zarius. And just look at those longbeards, took so much damage. Oh man, just watch it tear through these longbeards. It just went in the perfect direction. So it threw a bunch of the, long, the rifles off, it caused him to move his other rifle units forward, um, and just look at it tear through these guys. Look at their health! It is completely annihilated. I don't know what it is, why the Purple Sun of Darius does so much damage to high armored units, high mass units, um, but look at it just wreck these guys. It was one of the few times I'd wish I'd overcast a um, Vortex spell. Um, because it took out like a long beard, it took out half of another long beard, and it disrupted these Thunderers here um, to a great extent. So there you can see already wavering. Um, and these Thunders, look, because they're just auto-firing and I let my Spears go slightly in front, they're just going to be shooting straight at the Ungor Spear Herd, um, which is ideal for me. Um, and since these guys moved up, they're going to have a hard time opening fire, and then they fire Morgur. So this just worked out perfectly for me. Here you can see um, I do get a little too close with my Centigors, um, and he does satchel them because I forgot they had satchels. Oh, and look at those just flattening. Those poor Iron Breakers doing a ton of damage. Um, already, oh, which is one kill, just doing a ton of hit point damage. And you can see these Gore Herd are going to come in. These Chariots are going to come in the back. And man, these best Gore Herd are just going to go to town on these Longbeards. They're really going to have no hope in this fight. Um, you can see Morgur up the middle helping out. Um, meat shielding in there. Here come another unit of best Gores um, with some spear support. And they're just going to be filling in this gap. And again, you can see I'm forgetting a unit back there, but that's okay. Um, you, you can see some throwing axes being chucked at Grombrindle. Probably not the best choice, but I didn't really know quite what to throw at. And oh man, these chariots just got in the back here. They are not going to enjoy this fight at all. You can see some gore herd are going to get a nice flanking charge. And even though they're not armor piercing, they still have a huge weapon strength, so seven armor piercing damage is not the worst thing in the world. So they're still going to do okay and blob things up. You can see um, here comes some gore herd coming in the back. And what I'm going to do with this, these guys is I'm going to charge these guys up in the front and then just let my centigors of throwing axes shoot them in the back, uh, which is, you know, exactly where they want to be shooting. 
Um, so that's good. You can see these chariots are got into these thunders, laid them low. Um, Thunder is trying to get a good angle on them, but they're kind of moving a little too fast. And I think I'm going to cast another purple son of Zarius here, and he's going to run away, which is great reaction time there from my opponent. Um, but the purple sun goes where I want it to, sort of. <laughs> and um, does disrupt them, and then I'm going to charge them with the centigores with great weapons. Um, you can see Gorbel just wrecking people in the middle. I think he just tossed that dwarf over his head as the Ungor Raider arrow fire comes in. That is so cool. Man. Beastmen are just so much fun. You can see these long beards are breaking, chariots coming around, finding nice targets. Still almost full health. Uh, Morgur still very healthy. Um, Still got some centigores in the back, but they were primarily just to ensure me against, um, uh, what's it called? Gyrocopters. So they're getting some nice value here. He does turn his Grudgler around to shoot these guys, which is not, I guess, not a horrible decision. Here comes some Chaos Spawn who got summoned. I actually forgot about them, so here I, you can see I summoned two units. And that's really going to be backbreaking. Look how many dwarves just died right there. Oh man. Turned into Chaos Spawn. See my chariots still coming around. Iron Breakers, of course, tearing through these poor Gore Herd. <laughs> um, Runesmith taking on Morgur. He's not going to be able to put out enough damage at all to counter even his regeneration. Um, but you can see Flash Bomb coming down, Ground Bindle taking out a bunch of these Beastmen. Oh. Yeah, so. Super cool. Love him. It's hard to justify him, though, with the other two lords that are available. Um, but there you can see um, a quick double cast there. Um, some Beastmen and some uh, Empire. Empire is still one of my favorites. Here you can see a ton of kills, actually, on my British Shaman of Death. Um, a ton of kills on my Razorgore and my Centigore. I'm really getting into those squishy units and into the backs. You can see these poor Thunders just getting zero kills. Really, what did the Dwarf player in? Um, but anyways, great game to both my opponents today. And um, thanks so much for watching. That's that.